Hey there, fellow rumblers. You a jet or a shark? That's the last time I heard the term rumble used, uh, unironically. But hit that rumble button. Tomorrow, we're going to be live streaming for the first time on YouTube in a while. And hopefully, uh, hopefully bringing a lot of new people over here to rumble. But uh, thank you so much for the support. We are going to be continuing to upload on rumble uh, every day hereafter and live streaming here once we have that capability. We love you. Louder with Crowder is brought to you in part by... Dot com. Head over to the shop, support the fight, and buy some cool threads. It's the Tits Pajamas. Dot com. You gotta breathe into your <laughs> nether regions. Ooh, that was good. You show your power. <laughs> that was powerful. I've been doing that kundalini wow. yoga where I do this. I go, <laughs> <laughs> and people go, look at that. He's he's he needs to be in a short bus. I feel oh, like you were Tom you. Hanks peeing in a league of their own. <laughs> <laughs> Just kept going. Uh, I haven't seen uh, it, and I don't understand the reference. Oh come on. Oh, uh, you've seen it. Great this movie. Is, I really haven't. I, uh, I tuned in. I saw Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna, yeah. Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great reasons to not watch it. Those You're are right. good yeah. reasons. Honestly, yeah. uh, this is our last show, by the way, where we are not on YouTube. Uh, Tomorrow we will what? be streaming on the YouTube. We'll see what happens. We still don't yeah. have answers from them. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, people on Rumble watching. And, of course, uh, those who are on Mug Club. Today we'll be doing life advice uh, yeah. with uh, me and Gerald. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, Gerald Day is here. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing very better than yesterday. Yeah, much better than yeah, yesterday. Yeah, he came in and he's like, oh, I didn't sleep much. I'm like, oh, oh, oh that, must, that must be hard. Yeah. <laughs> Jerk. Court of Black Garrett is here. What's going on? What's happening? Uh, yeah, because a lot of black people do Ace Ventura eyebrows. <laughs> and Dave Landau is here. How are you? Stop uh, my own boy, I am okay. good. Yourself? Good. I'm, well, I'm okay. You have a show in Houston tonight. Tonight I do, 8 o'clock, sharp. Yeah, he has to travel and fly back, Jeez. and we're going to be doing uh, the show tomorrow on the YouTube, and it's uh, going to be Cultural Appropriation Month. Yeah. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about today. Uh, we'll be talking about you know the new Fauci email leaks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. which I've been Love watching it. CNN all morning. Um, they have, well, we'll talk about it a little bit. We they didn't will. really cover it. You said they covered it very briefly. They spent 20 minutes on the gir girl who pushed a bear off a ledge. Though. They did, yeah. Which is a great story. <laughs> Legitimately cool. But it, it doesn't really, um, I mean, I mean the, 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 the actual, uh, 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 the dissolving of our democracy doesn't center yeah. around a, scandal. No. a bear being given the Humpty Dumpty treatment. It's, it's a, a Which is progress. remarkable. We'll talk about it tomorrow. She just pushes a bear off a ledge. There are caliber <laughs> arguments. What do you need for yeah. a brown bear? Yeah. Do you play dead? She just pushes her off a ledge. Yeah. The That's bear's it. like, ah. Oh, That's it. For that. uh, but before we do any of that. It's a hate bear crime. It is yeah. a hate <laughs> bear crime. All in Pride Month, too. Yeah. Uh, before we get to that, it is, uh, it's time for This Week in Biden. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Now, it's wow. sad that I'm nope. saying that this is a, uh, let me set up this clip. Biden, former Vice President Joe Biden, right. just had yet another uh, poor kids are just as smart as white kids oh, moment no. really yeah just this was just yesterday oh, no. your former vice president the data shows young black entrepreneurs are just as capable of succeeding <laughs> given the chance as white entrepreneurs are but they don't have lawyers this, they don't have this surprises they, you they, they don't have accountants but they have great ideas. <laughs> Does anyone doubt this whole nation would be better off Bro. from the investments those people uh -huh. make? And I promise you, that's why I set up this uh, National Small Business Administration that's much broader, because they're going to get those loans. Imagine if that guy was your public defendant. Uh, you uh, know, just, yeah, since so I'm going to Jerry, he's your divorced attorney. She's going to get everything. They're giving you <laughs> death for parking tickets? Yeah. <laughs> He also just claimed know. to set up the Small Business Association, which was right. around before he was born. Which, actually, by the way, that's why said, I did it. That actually, was me. he said, Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the... 
Jory. Jory. <laughs> I'm getting better. Um, and by the way, this is this is not a new sentiment. We've talked yeah, about this. No. Is, it's not even the racism of, of, of soft expectations. It's just racism. <laughs> Joe it's, Biden it's just the racism. thinks that black people are less capable, and yeah. so that's why he has to, <sighs> like a daily affirmation, black people are just as capable as white people. Black people are just as capable as white people. <laughs> black people are just as capable as white people. And he does it. It's like in his meditation app, because this is him, uh, I believe, back in, yeah, it's 2019, so not that long ago. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> Bro, no. I love that he's dressed like Judge Smales. <laughs> yeah. I love that that's the most honest moment we get out of him. And by the way, this isn't so this isn't all that he this is this is a long this week in Biden. Yeah, that's pretty, um, yeah. It's really more of a, a fortnight. <laughs> How long is a fortnight? Two is weeks. Fortnight two is weeks, two weeks. Well, okay. I, I didn't right. know because that's how they actually kept time when he was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And yeah, we do it through lines yeah. on the wall with a carving tool. Huh. <laughs> someone can someone sharpen my carving tool? I'm the president, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, then he said something else really uh, stupid, uh, uh, but still funny. According to the intelligence community, terrorism from white supremacy is the most lethal threat the homeland today, not ISIS, not Al Qaeda, white supremacists. Yeah. Huh? Stop it. Set it to code orange, more of a taupe. <laughs> he doesn't say little, words little like to and the anymore. No, he doesn't. You notice that he's like, it's the most know. threatening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jump right over it. <laughs> uh, white people. It threat <laughs> you white. Huh? You guys say more? Yeah, you actually need to say a lot more because we yes. don't understand anything you're saying, former Vice President Joe you Biden. You need to find ah. them, them connection words. It's like, <laughs> you push up. We do. You know the you know the thing. He's becoming unfrozen caveman lawyer. <laughs> yeah. It's former Vice President Biodome. It's, yeah. <laughs> terrible. Your world frightens and confuses. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should have never played that board game. Jew, Jews, manji. Do the Jews manji? No, no. manji. What? The Hebrews <laughs> eating snacks? Um, and here's something that he actually said, and this is this is uh, absolutely, I know you're going to think this is kind of, it's not really a sketch. We just yeah. made sure to emphasize this is actually something he said yes. in chronological order. You make sense of it. I challenge you, find today when you turn on the stations, sit on one station for two hours, and I don't know how many commercials you'll see. Just so Play eight see. to five. <laughs> Two to three out of five. <laughs> mixed race couples in them. That's not by accident. They're selling soap, man. <laughs> not a joke. Because they want to sell what they have. We have hope. I <laughs> Damn right. Wow, all of that made no sense. Except well, that I, he's I, racist. Guys, did you... Do you like to have some? I got some soap. Yeah. For okay. You guys. Oh. No. We told you put it put it away. We don't not the Amway stuff on the not the Amway stuff on this show. Okay. Not, not on this show. Oh. No. What? You don't want to be squeak, squeaky clean. Cut it out. Are you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black? I don't give a rat's ass if you're double diamond. Well, fine or whatever. He seriously keeps <laughs> You guys don't want to be clean. That's, that's on you. That's on you. <laughs> Listen. You guys be stinky. So this is another trend. Before we get to Fauci, which is just something we are going to have to give quite a bit of time and care. Yeah. Uh, I would say, but yeah. we're going to have to use it with, ki with with kit gloves, but they're they're not sanitized. Kit boxing gloves? Yeah, I don't. There we go. I don't know what kit gloves really means. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. It's a term that people use. But uh, this is something else that happened. The uh, the Gulf of Oman is trending because Iran's biggest navy ship. Now, by the way, when I first read this, I thought uh, Gulf of Omar, which is just uh, Elon's sibling sex tape. It's Gulf of Oman. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, Actually, that's Gulf of Oman. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, it's worse. Oh no. Hey, these are just facts. Yeah, they I'm are. Jay. Jay. Best case scenario, uh, she consummated the marriage for a visa. <laughs> that with is her the best case scenario. scenario. Yeah, that is Even PolitiFact and Snopes and Washington Post, they didn't fact check it. They just went, mm, no. you know what? Yeah. No. I'm going to wash my no. hands. That's absolutely sick. You would think that it would be, you know, considering that white supremacy is the biggest threat, you would yeah. think that the only person to hold office in the United States right now who has been married to a sibling would be, you know, I don't know, someone from Kimmy Schmidt or something like that. And instead it's Ilan Omar. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, right. You do what you got to do, Steve. Okay. All right. So Gulf of Oman is trending because Iran's biggest Navy ship, uh, the Karg, just sank in the Gulf uh, of Oman after, uh, you would say, you would think they had been fired upon. It's just a fire. Oh. Well, that's fire. Wow. 
So there you go. This is trending everywhere. I mean, I don't know. You know, for me, any day that an Iranian ship uh, goes down is a good day. It, I, you know, I had to check myself for a second because when I first read the story, I laughed instinctively. Yeah, because yeah. it ran. Right. Yeah. I was just like, well, wait a minute. That probably means some people died. Okay. Did you laugh in Iranian? No, well, just ha 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 Jews. <laughs> 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 la, 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 la. They That's how they wake up in Iran. Them. Like, don't yeah. wake daddy. You keep That's pressing the button and it oh. says, Juice! Ha, ha, ha. That's the fire alarm. It's just, yeah. la, 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 la. <laughs> it's just some guy on top oh, of the no, ship. Oh, no, I have to get out. We do not like your country, but we are fans of your Zina. Yes. So uh, by the way, hey, subscribe to the podcast. If you're yeah. watching this on, on Rumble, you're not watching on Mug Club, uh, you can still subscribe on Apple, Android, Spotify, right? You can listen there. Don't yeah. lose touch with us. We're going to be streaming to YouTube tomorrow, but um, I'm hoping that we... Uh, yeah, we'll look, I'm hoping cross that some they, fingers. Yeah, I don't know. We don't know the rules. We still don't know the rules. That would be helpful. So um, another story before we get to Fauci. Yesterday, uh, Governor Tex, uh, Texas Governor Abbott. Uh-huh. Yes. You know he's in a wheelchair, that guy? He Whoa. is. Who knew? Um, he declared the border uh, a crisis right now. Oh. Actual, he actually declared it a state of disaster. This is what he uh, put out on Twitter. He said, President Biden's open border policies... <laughs> That's him wheeling up to the oh, okay. come on. tweet deck. <laughs> President Biden's open border. That's him putting the brake on the yeah, wheel. He's got to yeah. set it. He President uh, it. Biden's yeah, open border policies have paved the way for dangerous gangs and cartels, human traffickers, and deadly drugs like fentanyl to pour into our communities. By declaring a state of disaster, Texas will have more resources and strategies at our disposal to protect landowners. So this is something like it's been going on for a while. It is an actual disaster. There are record yeah. numbers of illegal immigrants trying to get through uh, the border. And this is, some, this is a perfect example where when the federal government doesn't do its job, it negatively harms the states. Yeah. This is the job. And I understand a lot of libertarians. Look, most things should be left to the states. The issue of national security is a national issue. Yeah, it's kind of their job. Wars are not left to the states. Borders are not left to the states. Yeah. National emergencies are not left to the states. So you can still be a constitutional conservative. You can still be a federalist. Some people use that term. And understand the legitimate purview of the federal government. Texas should not be required to foot the bill for uh, a lame administration. And uh, we actually uh, have exclusive, I believe, they're not showing it on CNN now at the southern border, uh, correspondent for first-hand account of the disaster. Oh, Very serious situation down there. Look at those dreamers. (laughs) (laughs) Stephen, don't worry, Kamala Harris is in charge of it. Yeah. Oh, well, so, she's also not. She's also not seen it. Yeah, that's, I'm that's, always glad well, to. Listen, you don't have to go look at a problem to understand it. Dan. <laughs> I'm always true, glad especially. when her open thighs are at the tiller of the ship. Uh. <laughs> she could slow him down. Uh, if she were on the Titanic. She wouldn't be. If she were, the, she wouldn't be playing the violin. She'd be uh, playing the harmonica with her. <laughs> oh, she was. That's a talent, of a though. Fish that's boat. Weird, they would yeah. be like, she stinks. Is that Dylan? <laughs> no, it's Kamala Harris. Yeah, I know it's easy to confuse for American folk. She just, you know, use it or lose it. Uh, by the way, <laughs> tomorrow starting Cultural Appropriation Month. Oh, yeah. Cultural Ooh. Appropriation Month tomorrow. So coming back into YouTube yes. strong. It's Japan. Oh. For the first week. Japan. Good, good I know a lot of people are saying, are you going to do Cultural Appropriation Month this uh, year? Uh, six years running now. Yeah. Really? And the answer, of course, is yes. <laughs> I mean. Uh, and it's where we, ap- we appreciate cultures. Right. Because to appropriate is appreciate. So we yeah. have contests with you where you send in your best Japanese-themed costumes, yeah. best Japanese facts that maybe people don't know. There you go. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun and yeah. uh, short-lived. It. Short-lived. Yeah. <laughs> Strikes around oh, the corner. Oh, I forgot yeah, to mention, exactly too, by the way, uh, CrowderShop.com. You still have until June 9th to get it for Father's Day. We have a Tumblr right here, uh, Best Dad Ever. So uh, oh. we're selling some Father's Day I love Day that hat. Get all that really merch. Good. Yeah, look, look at oh, this. Look at this, this shirt right here. Stephen won't wear his own face. Grown men wear shouldn't it. wear hoodies. Yeah. Uh, and here's also Vice President Kamala Harris. She got uh, she got just absolutely raked over the coals yeah. on Instagram uh, <laughs> for referring to Memorial Day as a quote long weekend. Yeah, bitch. Mm. Well, it was for a lot of soldiers. Yeah. It ended up being a permanent. It ended up being a permanent weekend. No, I'm serious. It's unbelievable. It, it's true. It's awful. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, yeah. look, I wouldn't give her that much flack if it weren't taken in tandem with all the other crap. Right, exactly. You can give her a pass if she's supporting the troops all the other Yeah, some people tried to give me flack where I said, look, I think we can honor our fallen soldiers and still work. It's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket <laughs> every year. Disagree. And I stand by that. And Labor Day is for communists. <laughs> Um, I disagree, I disagree with both agree. of those very heavily. <laughs> <laughs> you think you think you think these soldiers in heaven care if we show up for work? Come on. Well, a day they want to look down at the bikini clad babes on yeah. the beach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was about to say a day of remembrance and barbecue. They want to look down on the Gulf Most of Omar. Um, 
It's not as bad though, by the way. So that that tweet or that post, the Instagram barbecue, yeah, got Instagram. a lot of crap, but uh, it's it's not as bad as the video she uploaded today to try and pander and win back some goodwill mm. from people in the military. Hello, midshipman barber. How are you? I'm doing well. It's such an honor to meet you, ma'am. You started a, a whole program to mentor around STEM. Talk to me about all that. My, my engineering pursuit really came from a pursuit for to, in wanting to serve. <laughs> well, ma'am, I can't. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Leave her 2000 for all those interracial moments. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Got you again. Where was she looking, it's by the Kayola. way? It's Kayola. Yeah. It's like, she's like, I know the camera's right here and I'm supposed to be looking at you, but hi. It depends. Sometimes she just rotates her head yeah. around 360 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> For all the 2,000 parts you left on the beaches of Normandy. Yeah. <laughs> Use some Have soap. Have a good weekend. You stinky. Gosh, I cannot believe Kamala Harris. It's, it's, it's very cool. Remember how they tried to keep Biden hidden? going into the election. Yeah. Keep her now right. they're absolutely keeping Kamala Harris hidden because they know that if something has to happen, if there needs to be a transition of power, or if she has to be the candidate in the next yeah. election, the less that Americans oh, yeah. see of her, oh, the yeah. better. Extremely Specifically unlikely. black Americans. Black Americans cannot stand Kamala Harris. She does not pull well with them. Yeah, so she was put in charge of the border, has done nothing on that. Now she's right. being put in charge from Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, former Vice President, <laughs> He's like, it's for, good now. For uh, voting rights. Else. It's like, yeah. uh, we, we here, Kamala, she'll do it. And she'll do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and she'll put more blacks behind bars than the love That's boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did make a job of it. Yeah, she was like, oh, we could use the slave labor. I mean, cheap I, labor. Yeah. yeah it's I mean, uh, way. justice. Uh, yay, yay, justice. Yay. Um, I bet you she didn't even know what Memorial Day was. No, I guarantee probably. it. I bet you she's not. Like, if you asked her, she would go, I, I don't know. It's, like, for oh, it's for veterans? Oh, yeah, that's duh. Veterans Day. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, uh, I still get confused because in Canada, we have Independence Day. Oh, no, wait, sorry. In Canada, we have, <laughs> we have, we have Independence Day. Day. In Canada, <laughs> sorry. We, in Canada, we have Remembrance Day. Right, we right, don't right, have right. Independence the Day. Right. We have Victoria Day. Right. Which is basically like, hey, we Bend said, sure, day. we're going to yeah. we're gonna bend over <laughs> for the monarchy. So I always get confused Canada. because you have Memorial Day, you have Veterans Day, and then you have Remembrance Day, and that's in Canada. And then yeah. I, I just always get the dates wrong. But yeah. the point is, I actually appreciate our soldiers. Yeah. Kamala yeah. Harris, um, she, she appreciates, you know, mayors who sleep with her and give her jobs. Different strokes. My dad died as a result of serving the country. I'm sorry. Did that Kamala Harris laugh? Yeah. Uh, well, say, way to bring us down. Again. Yeah. My dad died. For, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was that's, hoping he was going to do it. More natural. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he did. That's why I don't like her. Well, that's one of the many reasons I don't like her. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many one. reasons that people oh don't like gosh. her. Hey, by the way, let's check, uh, let's check CNN right now because we're about to go to the Fauci emails. This is a top trend on Big Twitter. Story. It's the biggest story of really the last several weeks. And I haven't seen them covered at all on CNN. Where are they covering it now? Yeah. Today, Biden gives an update on COVID-19 vaccinations. Okay. Wow. That is, <laughs> and then, yeah. An update on vaccines. And this is something yeah. we're going to talk about with the emails. There is, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't take the vaccine. That's not what I'm doing at all. I think it makes a lot of sense for a lot of people to take the vaccine. Yeah. And I think in yeah. some cases, you weigh the risk rewards. It doesn't make sense for some people to get the vaccine. Like children. You mean like all medicine? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's an individual uh, I mean, decision, yeah. right? Your body, your choice. I think the Klan should give up vaccines. Yes. <laughs> Just to what? see how they would have to react. <laughs> like Free I, I vaccine it, from but the I Grand Wizard. <laughs> no, it's, it's the Grand Cyclops. Yeah. Oh, it's is the, that what it is? Is it Exalted Cyclops, Grand Wizard? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's a bunch of D&D D nerds who just wanted to cover Like, no, we're right. just racist. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think. I think I think you were playing Pokemon cards. Um, so, Fauci, <laughs> this is the email. These are the emails right now that have been released. But I want to talk about this. There's been a yeah. disproportionate focus on vaccines. And you'll see in these emails, a lot of people are talking about how Fauci, and I'll cover this, how Fauci, um, you know, the masks, he didn't think that masks worked. Right, and right. that's true, but people can change their minds. I don't know why he changed his mind, because he never made the case as to why he was wrong before, sort of like when Mitt Romney said, hey, I'm pro-life now. Well, you were pro-abortion up until you weren't, and you were already a Mormon, so it wasn't, what's your flash of genius moment? What changed? He never gave an yeah. answer. Fauci never gave an answer when he used to say, masks may do ha more harm than good. Then he just says, ah, now double mask. So that's in the emails. But the thing that sticks out to me is you can read through all of these emails. I haven't had time to read all of them, obviously, at the time of the show. I'm going to continue reading them for the rest of the day so that we have more content tomorrow on yeah. this. He never mentions treatment. It's only diagnostics and vaccines. Mm. 
And we don't treat any other virus or disease that way. Yeah. A huge portion of the approach is what treatments are available right now that we can use to save lives. That's always a part of a multi-pronged approach for responsible doctors. That's what's most telling to me, and, and, and it frustrates me a little bit that other people aren't covering it. So I'll, I'll offer you, allow me to offer you this. Um, there are a few things that yeah. stick out from these emails. One is uh, the, uh, it was sent from Principal uh, Deputy Director Hugh Akinod Klaus to Fauci from, you know, the head of- <laughs> That's a name. NI well, how do, what does NIAID stand for exactly? Can someone tell me? Because I know NIH and I know we know the CDC. What does NIAID stand for? I don't know. Someone give that to me. I always forget what oh, it stands for. Oh, National Institute and in Infectious, or National something and in Infectious Disease, maybe? Well, are they- Allergy and Infectious Allergy and Infectious Disease. Okay. Are they approved oh, by the close. American, are they approved by the American Dental Association? Uh, three out of four. We'll double check it. <laughs> <laughs> Two to three out of five or six. Yeah, he doctors. can't use basic. <laughs> he can't use basic bridge words, but all of a sudden he's doing advanced math. Yeah. There's eight uh, out of twenty commercials, and three out of those five. Yeah. Do three out of also, five out of six. If you need to sod si your yard and the co the cosine and the tangent, okay. <laughs> you're right. just are you just one of those things where yeah. you just throw out word salad and hope that we don't realize you're bullshitting? Okay. I believe. Fifty percent of the time it works. One hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, just say it more confidently, Joe Biden. Push ups. So the email was sent to Fauci. This is one. This is we have a copy here. It reads: The paper you sent me says the experiments were performed before the gain of function pause, but have since been reviewed and approved by NIH. Not sure what that means, since Emily is sure that no coronavirus work has gone through the P3 framework. She will try to determine if we have any distant ties to this work abroad. So at the very least, Fauci is completely incompetent and should have never been in charge of the response. At worst, he knew about the gain-of-function research and seemed to be okay with it. And again, taken in tandem with what we've already covered, where he had talked about how the risks uh, are, are outweighed by the reward of gain-of-function, this is big. Yeah. This matters. We have a track record of Fauci not being entirely against gain-of-function, and we know that American uh, tax dollars went to the lab where they were likely conducting gain of function research. These are things that we know. Yeah, and it was a topic of conversation. It's not like right. the first time he heard about it was when he was questioned in the hearing that we played the other day. Right. right. And this is all from January to June. So this is early on. That was February 1st. That was really, really early on in the process. They were already starting to talk about that. Like, hey, there's some confusion here. Gain of, gain of function stuff. What are we doing here? And he knows about it. Then, yeah. Over a year ago. Oh, you're you quiet today, Dave. Way over a year. I'm just. Uh, you just wake up at eight. Yeah. <laughs> I Me. Eight fifty-five. Oh, it's one of those days. Well, tomorrow's <laughs> a big I day. Do? What I do? I'm just, just so quiet. I was talking earlier. Yeah, okay. church mouse with <laughs> the peeps church and mouse. stuff. I could well, hear, I'm sorry. I could hear I, a rat <laughs> piss on cotton, which also is in one of these emails. I don't know why he has such a... That's a weird <laughs> saying. So February fifth, twenty twenty, Fauci wrote to uh, Sylvia Burwell about the. Uh, inefficacy of masks and i always yeah. uh, i always have a problem with in efficacy and efficiency yeah those words and they it doesn't matter the point is you should try paralysis <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to Paralysis. epitome <laughs> i got suckered into the paralegal by the same guy over here selling amway yeah i know it's a good deal i'm telling you bathroom. so more, more interesting though here is uh they talk about the mask in fact you're saying yeah. he's not convinced that masks work saying that it may help really more so the people who are infected from spreading it, but it won't right. help people who are not infected from inhaling it. He talks about this in the emails. Yeah. And again, he gives a pretty lengthy explanation as to why masks won't work. So that hmm. should be counterbalanced with, this is why I was wrong, this right. is why masks work. That's all I'm asking for. We've never gotten that. And I think, no. again, just sort of like if YouTube removes us permanently, okay? Yeah. You will radicalize people more because people will leave mainstream platforms and then they'll be searching for alternatives, and that's where they go down rabbit holes. Yeah. That's where they find more extreme people. If you get rid of the basic bitch pumpkin spice conservative latte, <laughs> me, you will radicalize people. And the same thing here. If you don't give people an explanation on masks and just say, wear the masks, obey, right. you create a rebound effect. And pe especially in America. Listen, it's the same reason that we have a gun culture. Canada doesn't. Japan doesn't. We have a general problem with authority, and I like it that way. So he talks yeah. about the masks, doesn't believe that they work. Okay. But something else that's really telling in here. Yeah. He says, money is best spent on medical countermeasures such as diagnostics and vaccines. Okay. Huh. And this is a common hmm. thread. Through. No focus on treatment. By the way, right. you know that the FDA removed their uh, their ban or their pause on hydroxychloroquine. They rescinded yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. 
There's enough data to show that it helps now. Uh, Rem, how do we pronounce it? Remsdivir? Remsdivir? Rem, Remsdivir? Remvisdir? Rem, 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 you know exactly like what they're, I'm they're, talking is about. Is that a Lord of the Rings character? <laughs> you know yeah. exactly what I'm talking about. Don't try and catch me on it. That also helps. There are all kinds of right. currently available antivirals, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory steroids that, when combined, make a huge impact and can be taken at home. Yeah. All that was hap mm. uh, all that was uh, addressed was no, 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 yeah. no vaccines. Why do you think that's the case? Okay, let me not get into conspiracies, but what we know. So, uh, right here we have. Um, okay, good. I wanted to make sure I have this right. I'm reading this directly. Um, he expressed in his email here, April third, enthusiasm about collaborating with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation yeah. on the COVID response. This is what he wrote. As I had mentioned to Bill yesterday evening, I am enthusiastic about moving towards a collaborative and hopefully synergistic approach to COVID-19 on the part of NIAID, NIH, and the BMGF, uh, I don't know, Bill and Melinda <laughs> Gates Foundation. I'm tired with all these abbreviations. Yeah. Can we just not have abbreviations was like anymore in those stupid articles? Right. BMG <laughs> went out of business years ago. Yes. And he's also Bam a member, by the way, of the Bill and Melinda Gates Decades of Vaccine Leadership Council. Uh. Yeah. And as reported by Axios in June 2020, the NIH owns intellectual property used uh, in the Moderna development of the COVID vaccine. Oh. So there is a conflict of interest here. And by the way, I think we have a clip, right? This claim is actually backed up uh, by comments made in May 2020. The NIH director, Francis Collins. Well, we have a complicated system, don't we, David, when it comes to intellectual property. One of the vaccines, the one that's furthest along, was started actually at the federal government in our own vaccine research center at NIH and then worked with a biotechnology company called Moderna to get to where we are now with very impressive phase one results and getting ready to go into a large scale trial as early as July. That one, of course, we do have some particular uh, stake in the intellectual property. Remember when people uh, said that Donald Trump was, push was pushing hydroxychloroquine because yeah. he had a vested interest in Bayer? That yeah. guy was growing his mask. Yes. <laughs> He was, he's just a huge, he's just a, someone sprinkled some fairy dust on a Madame Tussaud. <laughs> uh, remember they were saying Donald Trump. Yeah. He's, he's trying, trying to make, make money off yeah. of big hydroxychloroquine. Yes. What is it, $4, $7 for a month's supply? Oh, it's a really it's bad It's absolutely idea. dirt cheap. Again, this is something, to me, I like the fact that Donald Trump was a billionaire. Did he, did he overinflate his net worth? Probably. Of course. But look, the guy making a few million dollars, it's not life-changing money for no, him. Not at all. He did it because... Well, he mentioned it. He talked about it because there was a lot of promising research. And now the FDA agrees that there's promising enough research that they have rescinded their ban or their pause on hydroxychloroquine. Not saying it's a cure-all, yeah. but we certainly know now that it reduces mortalities, but not after thousands died needlessly because they couldn't get access to it because Joe Biden, uh, well, actually the FDA, but of course Joe Biden, right. when he came into office, encouraged this, wanted to turn your general practitioner into a felon if he prescribed it. Yeah, and CNN constantly reported what a buffoon he was for thinking yep, right. that he could, yeah, cure yeah. anything with that. Uh, well, or even just treat, it, yeah, treat just, just treat just anything. Remember treat where anything, we were, yeah. right? And so any any medical professionals out there, ventilators are a really bad idea. To That's what they said. They're yeah. killing everyone. A really everyone. bad idea because once you get on a ventilator, it's very difficult sometimes to come off of it. And so we were at the point where hospitals were overflowing. We weren't just trying to prevent deaths. We were trying to prevent the collapse of our hospitals. That was the lockdown, not to prevent deaths collapse of our medical system and you're not focusing at all on things that would keep hospitals from over well not only that treatment. they said look we're going to be overburdened and the hospitals were not as overburdened but no, not keep all. in mind the hospitals were not overburdened as they said there would be when the only protocols and you see this in the email diagnostics and vaccines the only protocols were get a test yeah. if you're positive go to the hospital yeah. right that was it it was at first they were saying don't go to the hospital don't go to the hospital stay home right. and then they were saying right away go to the hospital look if you have the flu if you have a bronchial infection, you have a sinus infection, if you have some other kind of virus that's going around, anything, take your pick. Do you, does your doctor immediately send you to a hospital? Right. Or do they go through antibiotics? Yeah. Uh, possibly steroids like prednisone. In some cases, they've used hydroxychloroquine off-label. A lot of these, yeah. a lot of these antiviral treatments. In no other scenario have they ever said either do nothing or go straight to the hospital. Right. Their plan would require the overburdening of hospitals. And by the way, that that makes it more likely that you get COVID. Just like the guy who tried to kill himself with a shotgun to the head in Michigan, he tested positive for COVID, so it was listed as a COVID death. Well, sure, if you put everyone in the yeah, hospital I for did. long enough, 
<laughs> right. No, and they, they scared people into not going to the hospital to get treatment earlier in the process, right. which we know would have helped people tremendously. And we had doctors in California, I believe is where they were, that they were actually banned when they said, hey, we've got these clinics all across the state, and this seems to be working. This combination of drugs seems to be helping out. And before we move on, I want to go back to that Fauci email that you had highlighted where he, he was talking about uh, – just focusing on the vaccine, right? We just talked yeah. about it. It also says diagnostics and vaccine. Diagnostics and vaccine. Diagnostics means you have COVID. Tests. Okay. Yeah, that's and it. then vaccine means you prevent COVID. Right. In Nowhere between. in there is treating people with COVID. Yeah. It's not included. Yeah. It's not mentioned. It's a mundane detail. I just like, regards, <laughs> Tony. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but no, he, what he email. also mentions is he says that, and, and we, we can probably go back and highlight this, it says the masks that most Americans will go out and buy are ineffective because the virus will just pass through oh, them. Yeah. Fauci quoting Fauci. Look at that. If he only, if we had only had that information to say, hey, look, Surgeon General, I got it. He reversed on it. Maybe it was a PPE shortage and he was right. just trying to make sure stuff was there. Lying. Give you that. You lied to the American public. Don't do that. Okay. Fauci comes out. Masks are the best thing on the planet, except they're not. Well, also remember there during the interim, him and Dr. <laughs> Burks, they said you could use a scarf. Yeah. Remember yeah. they said that? Yeah. And that was actually Until they worse. then said, no, 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 no scarves, no neck gaiters. Yeah. Look, the issue with these emails is you can actually juxtapose it with what we were being told at these points in time. And they never match up. Mm. Yeah. I don't want to say never. They almost never match up. Yeah. And anybody who said any of any anybody who would have had the audacity to say what Fauci said in his emails yeah. would have been labeled a right wing conspiracy theorist and yeah. deplatformed for doing it. They're going to reinstate said, all the those virus goes through the mask. Fauci said so. You don't have any proof of that right now. Right. The emails will come out about a year from now and you'll be justified by this. But for now, you're gone. And I understand people can change their mind. But on everything. <laughs> Not on science. I thought science was science. On well, on but on everything though. Everything. Mask, no mask. Double mask, no double mask. Yes, double mask. Can't have a vaccine in a year. Have a vaccine in a year. Uh, no hydroxy. Okay, yes, hydroxy. But I don't even no think it's viral. changing my mind. It's it's just they had the information. They were trying to put out the information. Right. And they were called racist and stupid and everything else for for saying it. Yeah. This no. Was all and there, and there are people who stand to make a lot of money. Yeah. I'm wondering where all the liberals who complain about big pharma. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering oh. where they went to yeah. when look. Again, if you're just going to look at the available options, treatments that are generic, where the patent is no longer being held exclusively, right? You can get it for very inexpensive, and it significantly reduces mortality, okay? Yeah. These treatments are out there. They are available. I'm not saying it's a cure-all, but do you really think that doctors or big pharma have more of a vested interest in those or giant no-bid contracts for experimental right. vaccines? Yeah. And I use every, the term vaccine loosely, by the way. Yeah, that every government on the planet is conspiring with you to make sure that every citizen has to have one of these, potentially considering passports, work considering having you show this before you can come back, airplanes, mass transit, you have to show your vaccine card. Yeah. There's never been something like this in the history of the world where every single person on the planet is going to have to take When one I fractured my femur, way. I couldn't get an email of the MRI. They had to put it on a disc yeah. and I have nowhere to put it. Exactly. You should be able it's to It's one step away from a floppy. Yeah. We don't have a disk drive. <laughs> like, what is this? What does this come with a copy of Lemmings? <laughs> well, fax you. Yeah. So uh, here's another thing, too. He knew about the lab leak. Huh? What? what? Huh? The theory. Huh? The theory. In other words, look, this matters because it doesn't mean that he necessarily believed it. Right. But he acted as though the idea was so incredulous. Oh, what? Oh, what? Lab leak? Look, this is in an email to Fauci on February 21st, 2020. So early on... About the time that Donald Trump was talking about oh, this. Doctor, weird. hold on, I have to cough. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, COVID Not COVID, it's allergies. Oh, yeah. red. Dr. Michael Jacobs emailed uh, Fauci saying that he thought the virus came from a lab in Wuhan. This is the email. We think there is a possibility the virus was released from a lab in Wuhan, the biotech area of China. We also think the virus might be complex with another organism, another organism sound like Joe Biden, right. such as a yeast or fungus to make it more sticky. Wow. So, at mm. the very least, this was on his radar. And again, this is what matters. He said, no, listen, we all believe very strongly that it came from nature. At one point said, there is no evidence that it came from a lab. And yeah. then he said, I trust the Chinese scientists. He knew what was going on with the science in the, Chi in, in the Chinese government, really. Let's just say, Ch Chinese scientists, Chinese government. Okay, yeah. They're funded yeah, by the yeah. Chinese government. Just like, I don't think Fauci has seen a private sector dollar in his adult life. <laughs> Okay. Does anyone want to tell me that Fauci isn't a government employee? The highest paid government employee, I believe, right now at $800,000 salary. He makes but of ooh. course, he suckles at the taxpayer teat, even though he lacks an upper lip. 
<laughs> we're making it's hard paying to him eight hundred thousand dollars to do a terrible job. I believe that's yeah. what it is. Someone can we can bring it back yeah. up yeah. later. It's, I'm just going by rote. Yeah, I think it's eight hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot. All I don't politics. remember what it was, but uh, it's more, more than, than the president, president makes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by uh, the way, you know, Trump is so poor that he donated his entire salary while right. he was president of the United States. Look, there's a good thing to someone being really, really wealthy. I know. Running for office. I'll tell you this. This is the reason we don't have that many sponsors right on this show. Now we're not crazy. Yeah, he donated. We're not crazy wealthy. He wants to make money off hydrochloric. Right. Yes. Oh, exactly. yeah, he all was those waiting to cash in. All those big HCQ dollar dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> you give a little, you get a lot. I don't, what was I saying before? <laughs> so, I'm sorry. What was, I say, what was I saying before? Suckling at the government teats, uh, making more money than the president. I don't know. Oh, oh she's a piece of shit. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. $400,000 is the presidential salary. What I was saying is uh, oh. I'm glad. I'm glad that someone is a well, billionaire because yeah. they can't be bought or sold. Look, I'm not a billionaire. I'm not even a millionaire. But... Because the show matters more to me, the content. You notice we don't have a ton of sponsors. Yeah. Why? Because at a certain point, a few thousand dollars isn't life-changing money. Yeah. And I don't mm -hmm. want the quality of the show to suffer. So we don't have to put in 50 ads for sheets and toothbrushes and stuff. We put in, I think the most we've ever done is two in a show, and usually none, yeah. at most one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it doesn't make that much of a difference to me. That's what you want with someone running for president. Right. You want someone, I'm not saying that you only want to vote for billionaires. I'm not no. saying that everyone has to be the Rothschild. What I'm saying is, or the Rockefellers, what I'm saying is you want someone who can't be bought or sold. Hey, Tim the Toolman, come on, stop pointing around in there. You're all, oh, you guys geez. are all distracting me. Uh, the emails are pretty damning, but uh, this also, I should say, pales in comparison to the leaked phone call. That, again, no oh. one else is covering. Is I Danny. guess we have an exclusive between Fauci and the Chinese virologist. Yeah, disregard my last email. I've come around on masks. No, 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 no. You don't need masks. Right, but maybe if I wear two masks. Oh, my God. I'm not, more masks? No, no, don't need more masks. Okay, but what if my mask had whiskers? Risker. Yeah, riskers. I like that. Like, uh, maybe a little soft pink nose. Pink, I don't see how that would help. And maybe if we created an antiviral collar with a bell on it. Bell Carter. Yeah, I like the feeling of felt on my face and a little jingle when I walk. I could have a COVID buddy to, you know, we could have them wear the same costume mask. And at the same time, we do a number singing, we are Siamese, if you please. And we still are, if you don't, please. To keep the virus away. No, 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 it's not Siam to China. Also, I heard the virus is airborne. So maybe we'd avoid it if we transport ourselves lower you know like i'm thinking wear the masks with the bells and the soft pink nose and walk on all all fours and and that's it walk on all fours with our pink nose mask oh 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 no you furry i uh don't understand the question but yes Hey, that's well, what it is. He's in charge of one fifth of the economy. It's Look, it's your sauna. month, Doctor Fauci. It is your month. It is your month. Be proud. So proud. Delta, go <laughs> eat your fill. I had a feeling he was a meow myth. Meow meow. <laughs> <laughs> a meow meow. Oh, that, meow, there, meow. there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, furry. So look, I have a question for you. And you guys can smash that Rumble button if you're watching on Rumble. Why do you think BuzzFeed and the Washington Post? Why do you think they submitted the FOI request here? Mm, do you think it's just to run puff pieces? Or do you think they're trying to get out ahead of something? Again, why, when this was a one issue, why is this being discussed by the media? That's yeah. my question. Well, something the, lost out yeah, where to they're covering this story. Yeah, exactly. And you know they don't want to cover this because the more you dig into this, the more that you realize that this was all because they hated one person enough to try to get him out of office yep. and all of the consequences be damned. By the way, you and I were talking before the show. What was the biggest story going on throughout this entire process with Fauci and Trump? It was their... That like, he wasn't letting Fauci get in front of every camera that's yeah, ever existed. Exactly. He was muzzling him. He wasn't allowing him to speak truthfully about this. Fauci was receiving emails. There's tons of these that have been covered saying, are you being muzzled? Like, do you need help? Are you okay? It was literally it's like, are you being held Blink hostage? Twice. Blink yeah. if you can hear me. He was actually getting pissed off at people for asking him that question. He's like, guys, I have never been told what to say. I can go and say whatever I want. There is a process to go on Sunday shows. You let the department know. They let the White House know just so that they know what information is coming out. That is not them telling me what to say. Trump has never told me. Like, all of these things. You know what CNN covered in their article? He was tired. 
Yeah. They covered emails what? about people expressing concern that he was being worked too hard and that a lot was going on. And I'm like, yeah, a lot of people were tired. Yeah. Doctors and nurses were tired. People that were out of a job trying to find money to pay their bills were tired from trying to do that. I get that that was the deal, but the biggest story was Trump muzzling yeah. him, and he didn't do it. Well, and he's also not the pinnacle of health, so I'd imagine well, it fatigues you know, more easily. It's also, true. he was demanding being muzzled. He's older. Yeah, yeah. an electroshock collar. Ah, yes. Well, yeah. that's a that's a fetish. He don't muzzle, muzzle me, and <laughs> don't just. I prefer more of a more of a slip lead. <laughs> I bite. Jeez. It's my kink. Oh my! God. I got a wet nose. I got a wet <laughs> nose, which means I'm healthy. It's not a good sign with someone with the COVID, but with someone like myself, it means I'm happy and healthy. <laughs> Look at my spots. Gosh, <laughs> we never spotted son of a bitch. Uh, by the way, hey, you can follow us on Instagram, and the best way to whether you're watching on Rumble or Mug Club is uh, uh, YouTube tomorrow. Ooh. And by the way, everyone who's watching anywhere else you're watching or listening, tomorrow please go to YouTube. It yeah. starts at 10 a.m. Yeah, Eastern. Numbers. Leave it a like. Leave it a comment yeah. and uh, make sure that we get this out as far as we can because we don't know. We still don't have answers. We were in a holding pattern because we were hoping to get answers from YouTube as to yeah. what the violations are, what the what the rules are, what the. We don't really have those, so unbelievable. At a certain point, you just have to roll the dice. Um, yep. All right, this is something that I wanted to talk about, and uh, this comes from a Newsweek article. Um, this is something we all have heard, right? You all have heard, and this is something that is. Look, it's not necessarily uh, just a speci one specific story in the news, but it's it's something that's sort of a lie that's been repeated enough that everybody accepts it as, mm. accepts it as true, yeah. right? That it's harder to achieve the American dream now than it was right. in generations prior. And I don't want to be an old get-off-my-lawn guy because I understand that most of these complaints are coming from people in my generation. Yeah, Generation Z, too, but who really cares? But it's coming from mostly millennials. <laughs> That, uh, well, look, the, the American dream that you guys had, we, we, we don't have. And it's something that is uh, a really easy tool to use from those in the political left to divide and buy votes. But it's not true. Let me set this up. Marley was dead to begin with. It is not true. It is verifiably not true. As a matter of fact, it is the opposite of true. The American dream that your parents, that the boomers and generations before them, sought to achieve is more easily attainable now in more flexible ways than ever before. Yeah. But you won't hear that if you listen to the party of you need us, you're nothing, you're defeated. This country isn't working for working people, it's working only for those at the top. That's not the American dream, that's the American nightmare. I do not believe this economy Great is strong writing. when home foreclosures oh, wait are for now it. the highest on record, turning the American dream of home ownership into a nightmare. So the numbers say that <laughs> the you have writer's room is Freddy Krueger's boiler chance room. chance of doing better than your parents if you're born in the 90s. And that chance was 93% if you were born in the 40s or 50s. So the American dream is dying by the numbers. We are here because the American dream and our American democracy uh. are under attack and on the line like never before. The middle class Boys. has been dealt out of the American dream for too long. It's a receding dream. Still there, but it's a receding dream. Okay, now this brings me back to, and I know a lot of people say, two party men. No, no, look, look, look. I am a conservative and I am precluded from voting for Democrats. Doesn't mean that I don't have a lot of problems with Republicans, but I don't care. If you want to say Stephen is a Republican, yeah, sure. Yeah. I have only voted for Republicans in my adult life here in the United States yeah. because I can't vote for the party of abortion up until and including after birth period. So let me be really clear about that. However, if Democrats, and you see this consistently, are the party of you can't make it, you're poor, they're the party of the poor of the downtrodden, which is what yeah. they want to say, yeah. even though they're supported by the big banks. They're of supported course. by these huge labor unions, right, who, by the way, stand to make a lot more money than the average independent contractor or business owner. They need to keep you poor. Because let's say Democrats say, hey, you're poor, we're going to have a system. This is going to pull you out of poverty. Yeah. You get pulled out of poverty. You don't really need them anymore because they don't offer. They don't really bring anything else to the table. Again, if Republicans are the party of pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and we hear that yeah. in a mocking way, you have to, for Republicans to win, believe that you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps. So just look at the messaging first. Yeah. One is beholden to a positive, hopeful message, and one cannot waver 
from the line of you can't make it, the deck stacks against you. Why? Generational wealth, racism, sexism, LGBTQ, AAIPism. They want to ban trans people from sports. I just thought that they wanted males to compete with men. No, 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 it's not right ban. So this is what they want you to believe in order to purchase your vote. They want you to be anti-American dream and then tell you not to pursue it. Right, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, you exactly. can't get it. And then they'll use statistics. I'm sorry, Andrew Yang, I, you saw me scratching my head, and I'm like, he, he said that in the 40s and 50s, they had a 90% chance of doing better than their parents. Yeah. Do you remember what happened in the 30s? The Great Depression. Something, something great. Do you, yeah. remember, do you remember what happened in the early 40s? It's called World War II, right? The economy wasn't exactly booming at the time. We were focused on something else. Yeah. Yes, you had a high percentage because it sucked well, from I'll the go, I'll go to the numbers, Jeez. but let me just give you a snapshot. Okay, millennials. All right. You can take that deal, okay? You can go to war with Hitler. Yeah. You can be a part of a world war and a war effort and yeah. a baby, and you have to have a lot of babies. Okay. And then you can have your uh, job security and retirement. Yeah, and guess what that generation figured out? If you want to storm the beaches and protect democracy, you got to freaking do it. Nobody's going to sit there and say, oh, you're a victim. The seas are rough. You don't have to run ashore and take out Nazi Germany to save the entire planet. They came back and said, screw you guys. I can do it. I just went to war. I'm fine. I don't need a government. Can you imagine out. going into D-Day in those boats with a gluten allergy? Yeah. Uh, uh. Or even a peanut allergy. <laughs> yeah, even a peanut allergy. <laughs> For crying out loud, it itchy. ruined every high. It ruined every grade yeah. school field trip. You know it would have. It would have ruined the yeah. invasion oh, of yeah. Normandy. Ah! Like someone brought a sack brownie. Get an epipen. Get an epipen. <laughs> <laughs> It's too late. <laughs> There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's except on that boat. Yeah, yeah. except oh, in the boat. general vicinity <laughs> of someone who natural selection should have murdered already. I yeah. know. We didn't even need the Germans to have bullets. Apparently, if the if Gen Z goes, they just need to throw peanuts just over the wall. Just steal the EpiPens. Just keep throwing the peanuts. Or just rescind the Trump rules so that they <laughs> can raise the prices. <laughs> you all have COVID now? <laughs> Gluten-filled <laughs> dinner rolls, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look. A much different war. Let me go through the numbers here. They, 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 they use numbers, and again, they use numbers in a vacuum. So statistics matter. Sources matter. References matter. That's why we provide all of them. They're all available at ladderwithcrowder.com. You can go, or in the description. You can click the link in the description. Yep. You think we're wrong. You think I'm using bad references. Feel free to rebut them. Don't get everything right. I understand that. The claim mainly comes from, uh, this is a popular, uh, this is a circulating Newsweek article, that baby boomers... Uh, control 10 times more wealth than millennials. Okay, and then they try and make the argument, so I wanna give you their context, that they have significantly more wealth, uh, or they did at this point in their lives, mm. than millennials have now, right? Meaning people in their late 20s, early 30s. Right. Okay, as a percentage of the total economy. First, let me put that in context. What does baby boom mean? It means that it was a disproportionately large generation. Yeah. People didn't have televisions, and they were bored. They had more children <laughs> than any generation prior or generations after. And so, think of when a snake, right, eats a groundhog, and you see a giant bulge, there's that baby boom. Of course, yeah. just because of the sheer numbers, they're going to control more of the wealth in the country or own a larger share of it. Yeah. So that's the first number that's a little bit misleading. Let me kind of give you a snapshot that when people say the American dream is out of reach. Okay, it's, it's important to not, uh, and this is what a lot of millennials out there do. And I, by the way, I'm a millennial. I do think that a lot of my generation is entitled. Mm -hmm. yep. What do you mean? You think the internet is human right? You're entitled. Yeah. You're entitled. You think a free smartphone is a human right? <laughs> You're entitled. It's not. You do not have the right to force somebody else to create goods or services. You need to understand the difference between a right and a commodity. So you can't copy paste your dream to what the American dream was. Yeah. Your dream is you can work from home and you can make your own hours and you don't have to pay for health care and you can live in a society without war and you won't be drafted. Right? This is part of your dream. Let me give you a snapshot as to what the actual American dream was. Okay? American dream used to be work, have a car, Go out to eat rarely. When's the last time you had a bologna sandwich on Wonder Bread? Breakfast. <laughs> Retire at 65. That's still very attainable. <laughs> very attainable. Um, Damn you, Dave. So, like, we'll use an example, like in Detroit. That's where you're from. Highest per capita income in the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Okay. Has that changed? Yeah, has it changed? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Did somebody cliff dive? Home yeah. prices are lower now than in the 1950s. In well, yes, wow. I certainly would agree with if that. If you would present to someone in the 1950s, like, oh, well, love, this one looks nice. That's an old colonial, but uh, we noticed that price there. $12, you say? What's the catch? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is the Oklahoma land rush. If you will occupy, you can have it for free. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Well, the roof's caved in, and there's a man living in there. Oh, two men. Look Three at all men. Teeth. Oh, I'll tell it's you. 
Rustic yeah. game. It's just rustic. That's what the kids are going for now. <laughs> Will the dogs let us live there with them? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It comes. It's industrial chic. <laughs> You've had your Emmy shots, right? Also tetanus. Yeah, avoid that corner right there. It's a little sharp. So this neighborhood is very uh, ethnic. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, you mean like right? a, you mean there's a lot of those Urban. damn dumb Polacks? Oh, uh, not quite. You'll be yearning for the days of Polacks. <laughs> yes. Oh, you're gonna wish the Irish inhabited this neighborhood. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, how do you how do you feel about five times a day hearing the actual call to prayer? Because <laughs> that's free of charge. That comes here with uh, Music. an above ground pool. <laughs> Listen carefully. You can hear the leaders of this town having sex with their siblings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone's getting. What? You hear that? Yeah. Every every time a, a national congressional uh, seat holder bangs a brother, uh, an angel gets its green card. <laughs> I'm okay. going to go to the white BMW dealer. <laughs> So let's go back through uh, what this was. These, this was the American dream. Uh, Detroit was to that state. Yes, it absolutely right. was. But in it was exactly what it was for. Yeah. In 1990, about 50% of manufacturing employees were aged 21 to 36. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, that's 24 to 28% tops yeah. in 2017 right now. We know that's significantly lower in 2021. And it's significantly higher if you go back to the baby boom generation. All right. They were the baby boom generation, these people who you talk about, who had more wealth. Let's look at the choices. They were significantly more frugal, okay? Yeah. They went out to eat significantly less. They worked longer hours. They had less vacation. So average home uh, values doubled from 1970 to 2000, right? From 65,000 to 119,000 and 2000 dollars. 1973, the average home, okay, was 1,600 square feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Compared to 2,600. Jeez. We need no. more space. Square feet now. Well, we are much fatter. Yeah, we're right. large people <laughs> we now. We are fatter, lazier, less productive. Here's the thing. There is no lack of jobs right now. So in other words, if you say the American dream, the American dream was work an industrial job, yeah. get two weeks vacation, work 48 hours a week, retire at 65, die at 68. That was the American <laughs> dream. You can still do that. There's a sur yeah. There is a higher surplus of jobs right now, I believe, than more than what? Is it three decades? Someone can get me that number. I don't know the exact number. Uh, I know we talked about this earlier. Either yeah. three decades or four decades. There's a surplus of over eight million jobs. Wow. Right now. In the Good United jobs. States. Good jobs. And in Detroit, like line working jobs that yes. nobody wants to. It's insane. A huge portion of those jobs are manufacturing jobs. A huge portion of those jobs are La right, physical labor. Hey, I know you like to use the word labor movement because you took Humanities 101 and you read a couple of Marx articles. Yeah. But how about actually experiencing it? Labor ing. <laughs> <laughs> they work on average eight point yeah eight point three hours more per week That's than millennials insane. in manual labor and manufacturing jobs. They also cared about their kids and their families more oh, than true. themselves. Right. Well, and by the way, 66% of baby boomers were still in the workforce as of the time of the last, uh, the last census that had been conducted in 2018. That's higher than previous generations of the yeah. same age. They're working later into their lives. That's why you see greeters at Walmart. Because yes. they want to, <laughs> because they're fulfilled by hard work. Right. You know, not getting out of it. Also, oxygen tanks are expensive, and it's one of the perks. They are. That's true. Yeah. Free oxygen. Free. free oxygen tanks at Walmart. Uh, it's a great story. I don't know if it's just part of the outfit, if that's a show tank. <laughs> it really is. It's a it's like, but every time I go to Walmart, it's some 90-year-old with a tank. Here's your sticker. I don't want a sticker. Yeah. Get away from me. Disney has Mickey Mouse. Walmart has the tank. They have the yeah. tank. <laughs> yeah, do you know where you guys Gladys. keep your vegetables? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. You'd I'm eat. so scared. You would eat our vegetables? <laughs> 2015, 40% of millennials were I'm unemployed. I'm a vegetable. <laughs> oh, jeez. 40% of millennials were unemployed. That number got worse with COVID. 5.6 million millennials became unemployed. And now you can go to any leftist website and read articles about them saying how they don't want to go back to work because they prefer working from home. Look, that's fine. Just don't say that the American dream has been pulled away from you. Yeah. You've chosen not to work a manual labor job. You've chosen not to go to trade schools. There are over 8 million jobs available. You've chosen not to enter the workforce. Yeah. I want to be clear about something here, too, because this is something that, unfortunately, sometimes libertarians don't address and just say, oh, well, there will be better jobs if things become automated. And then you have people on the left, sometimes populists, who are kind of leftist, too, in some ways, saying, we have to make sure that we stop any and all automation. We have yeah. to stop. But the truth is, people refusing to work is the catalyst right now for automation. Automation is not the catalyst for unemployment. McDonald's cannot automate things quickly enough. Right. A lot of these companies are going, we can't pay people to show up and do the job. 
forget about the $15 minimum wage. A lot of these jobs, the bulk of these jobs pay more than that and people won't show up. So they've right. got to find out ways to automate. So here's the issue. You're lazy now, but you'll be automated out of a job permanently. That's a, that is a huge story that no one wants to tell. And again, let's go, let's go back through this um, right here. A lot of the unfulfilled jobs, right? We have computer numerical control machinists, mm -hmm. welders, maintenance technicians, um, which pay on average. I have the salaries right here. These are jobs that are available. This is Collage right Z1. Yeah. $80,000 a year, right, for a welding. Jeez. Numerical control machinist. You start at $45,000 You paid year. well. You start an apprenticeship, $45,000 a year. Maintenance technicians, you start at $40,000 a year. Now, I know you say, that's not enough. Yeah, 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 but you suck. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's no ex you have no experience yet. Right. And it's certainly above that $15, $15 an hour threshold. Exactly. Let's not start moving goalposts because it's not underwater basket weaving, you prick. Well, most people, when they start out, if you want to make a lot of money, you make zero. Look at all the people who started yep. businesses. They usually don't pay themselves as they get things going. So you getting to start out at $40,000 a year, you're overpaid. Right. Well, and that's when people are getting mad at, like, foreigners or whatever for coming into the country and you look at them. They're willing to work. They're willing to yeah. put in the hours. They're willing to work 100 hours a week and not pay, ma make a paycheck. What? I just stuttered like Biden. No, no, they, just started <laughs> like no, they make a paycheck. That was that was one video that we did where we went and we, we stole illegal immigrants' jobs where we went to uh, Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. And I was surprised. Remember, they yeah. were starting at yeah. like 40 an hour. And once we got down to, we, said, we said, we'll do it 25 an hour. Yeah. We'll do 20, like to help build a deck. 25 an hour, they all quit and waited for the next truck. 25 an hour, tax-free. Remember the one guy looked yeah. at me and goes, that's not how it works, man. They were mad. That's not, they were mad yeah. because we were saying, look, look, there's in 40, 35, 30 an hour. We said, we'll do it for 25 an hour. I don't think yeah. we ever went lower than 20. You no. mean in Home Depot or out front? <laughs> out front. Out front. Yeah, yeah, front. Yeah, out yeah, front. I mean, we, went, we found the areas where the, uh, the local uh, illegal uh, immigrants, I believe they were illegal, largely because they said so. Yeah, and they all um, ran away. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and they all ran away when we threatened to call ICE. And yeah. look, the truth is, those jobs actually pay a lot higher than people realize. They want you to believe that they're yeah. picking lettuce for $3 an hour because these are, no, these people are actually, these people, meaning who come to this country, are working for significantly higher wages than a lot of millennials because they're willing to do tougher jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The market there is actually, a lot of people don't know, they make a lot of money. They make good money. And it's a problem with you. It's not just a problem with automation and big corporations. So this is something else that's important. We just talked about these jobs that if you you, you know you, you go to trade school. Also, yeah. they're, they're in and of itself. Trade school, about $5,000 a year or $5,000 total. Sorry, I believe Jeez. total yeah. to get into that trade. That's a wow. steal. Let's compare that to the debt, and we'll get to that in a second. The average salaries of people with social science degrees, for example, they come out to around thirty or $40,000 a year. Ugh. But much higher unemployment rates and much higher debt rates. Why would you do that? <laughs> that just well, you know what? It's a brilliant ploy because the Democrats say, look, the American dream is dead. By the way, we're going to pay for, was it seven, eight, 16, 17, so 22 ridiculous. years of school, yeah. regardless of degree? Because everyone deserves an education. How about everyone, does, how about everyone should be able to relatively easily procure a skill that adds value to society. Yeah. Not everyone should get a degree because I don't think that I should be footing the bill for a gender studies degree. No. I don't think that my taxpayer dollars, especially people out there who paid $5,000 and became a welder, why should they pay for your Afro lesbian LGBTQ Pride Month degree? Well, they shouldn't. And you're taking away, <laughs> by the way, you're taking away people's incentive to improve themselves. When I worked a job for $7 an hour cleaning up filing at uh, an eye makers, I was like, well, this really sucks. I'd like to grab some skills that will get me paid better and move me away from this job. And so I did. Right. And that was the latter every single time was I want to make more money. I want to do more. I need better skills. And so I have to go do that. Now yeah. they just want to start out like Unem yeah. unemployment. This is the number. Unemployment is 11 percent for political science uh, degrees. Wow. Compared to a forty three thousand a year salary. Just com <laughs> just compare that to a welder. Yeah. I, I know you only care about them when you want to try and get their votes every few election cycles. But you wonder why all of a sudden there's a red wave in rural and manufacturing yeah. areas. They understand the value of hard work. Student debt, $1.7 trillion. Dollars. Yeah. $1.7 trillion. Dollars. We should just pay that off, right? And what? who do you think when you go to college, who do you think has the highest earning to debt ratio? First off, the, again, it's higher in trade schools yeah. and small business owners in a lot of cases. STEM fields. No one is saying you shouldn't go to college for a specialized degree. Yeah. I'm glad that Dr. Ben Carson... Did some paperwork before separating conjoined <laughs> twins at the head. 
But I don't I think you do need that. to go to study the inherently racist systems that exist within the patriarchy. Right. That's not a four-year degree. <laughs> That's a scream at the sky event. Yeah, you can no, find that I on learned YouTube. about it trying to ignore it. <laughs> yeah, there's no way yeah, to avoid it. I have oh a PhD God. in all that crap. I have to pay a hundred thousand dollars for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and twenty to fifty percent of students who enter college are undecided. Why do I have to well, pay this yeah. much? Uh, the white man. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Precisely. <laughs> the patriarchy. That's exactly. What got you down. Who should I make my check out to? Also, the white man. Ah, uh, yes. I see how this works. Yeah. <laughs> Who oh, am I? They, they the get out of man. college and then they complain. <laughs> I, literally, here's mom your and teacher, dad, the white man. Yeah, mom and dad. I swear <laughs> to you, had this conversation at some point. Please do something that will make you money in life. No, I want to get this art degree. Fine, get the art degree. It's your choice. Later on, I can't believe I have all this student debt that I can't pay off with my stupid art degree that doesn't pay anything. Yeah, you have. To, you uh, can't make both arguments. It's one or the other. Either suffer through the consequences and be. And we'll be artist. accused here of being uh, of not being empathetic. Be right. And look, uh, yeah. No, yeah, I don't care because they're not empathetic towards any of us or anybody else or what yeah. you've put in, what you've risked, what you've done right. to build this. All of us. Look, you're years. also a com you're a, you're a touring stand-up comedian. Correct. Do you realize how many of them were around in the Great Depression? Exactly. You were the Buster Scruggs quadriplegic who Liam Neeson <laughs> threw in the riverbed. Oh, jeez. You weren't a valued member of society. No. no. Buster Keaton wasn't. Any of those movie actors were not. <laughs> no. Especially Fatty Arbuckle after the Coke bottle. No. Oh, he was yeah, innocent, true. I hear. This is, this is one of those situations. You have the choice. And, of course, you work for nothing when you start doing stuff. You work for nothing. In a, it, very dangerously, too. Yeah. Because you Very go into deep. places that should not have comedy nights. And you're, like, <laughs> you're like, so this is the Hells Angels bike. All right. Yeah. All right. Now go. be okay, funny. Go tell hey, some everybody. Jokes I had a guy offer to pay me in Coke at 18 years old. Really? Yeah. Like, no, no, no. No. I do, it, was, it was in New York, not New York City. And I said, no, no, no. I don't do drugs. He goes, oh, well, you, do, you, get, you get more money for it. I said, yourself. I don't do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> so do I need to make a call? No, 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 no. And then I think it ended up being like $400 for six shows that weekend. Oh, I've had that many times. Like, you could sell it. And I'm like, I got to be honest. I didn't work all weekend to sell to Coke. To continue yeah. to work. <laughs> if, if I was just going to sell Coke, I would have done that instead of this job. Yeah. <laughs> Cut out the middleman. Could have gotten it at wholesale. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, but that's a choice that you have. There is more flexibility yeah. now. And here's the thing. People want flexibility. They want a lot of these new opportunities. Yeah. But they, they, but they still want to apply that to the American dream that they believe existed. Look, okay, and I'm not empathetic. I am not empathetic to people of my age demographic, right? And I understand this because I am one of them, and I hear it all the time. Look, it feels like the deck is stacked against you, and I understand that. Sometimes I feel that way. When I, was, when I first started working, um, I thought, man, this is, how do I save up? How do I? Yeah. And I realized, oh, wait a second. I don't need this phone. I don't need this internet plan. I don't need cable. I don't need a nice, I can get a used car that's not yeah. very expensive. Certainly, there were no Kia Rio equivalents back then. You paid for an expensive hunk of steel Chevy, and it didn't work after about three years. You had and to you replace those cash. cars. And you paid cash. Good credit. Right? Live in a 1,600 square foot home. Yeah. This is still available to you right now. And most of, and again, if you move out of, move out of a big city, you can get a 1,600 square foot home on the low six figures, but that's not what you want. So let's go back to this idea. Well, older people, okay, boomer, and I'm not a boomer. <laughs> they go, okay, boomer, it was easy for you to say. No, 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 Do you really think, when we use this Newsweek article, millennials out there, do you really think that it would be hard to create a life for yourself where you live, where you can save up and buy, live in a 1,600 square foot home, have one car, get two weeks of vacations a year, work 50 hours a week, and retire at 65. You really think that's less attainable for you now? Or are you saying your dream of two cars and air conditioning and an average 2,600 square foot home and flexibility and more time off, being able to work from home and retiring early, for crying out loud, people retired three years before they died. A lot of people don't understand when they talk yeah. about Social yeah. Security. Yeah. Do you realize when Social Security came out, you get it at 65. Life expectancy was 67. They're not going to get paid for long. Sure, we had, we'll give you money. Yeah, and we had more workers per retirees, yeah. oh, and they lived far. for less time yeah, than they today. Gave you, they gave you a watch that they took off your wrist at the funeral. Right. <laughs> and gave it to Can the I next guy. Yeah. <laughs> and Tom Selleck shows up and takes your house. <laughs> this isn't my first rodeo. Oh, ah, I see how oh, it is. The but New they, Deal was a bad one. But they want to live in the inner <laughs> cities. They want to live in these rural or urban areas where they can go walking to fun yeah. and great restaurants, and they have a really good time and pay $6,000 in rent for a 
two bedroom apartment, right? If, for if an that, apartment right? that I could have got insane. fifteen years ago for three dollars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, this and is nice." And by the way, yeah. I'm not saying that you have a have to live a life of austerity and not no. enjoy anything. But let's put this into context, okay? People say, "Well, is it?" Is it and AOC will say this: "Is it wrong? Shouldn't it also be a human right to be able to enjoy insert whatever here?" Oh, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not saying that you should live a miserable life, and you don't have to. However, let's put this in context. Let's say you could travel back to the era of boomers when your when your parents were born. All right? Let's go to the 1950s. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. <laughs> and not could they do it every now and then? You know, a four or six dollar. I went to Starbucks for the first time for the first time in years, years. The last time I'd been to Starbucks was a Christmas parade, and we got a peppermint latte. Yeah. And I didn't foot the bill. <laughs> I went the other day. Cheap. I, I couldn't believe price is six, seven dollars. Oh, yeah. So let's just scale it down. Let's say a four dollar cup of coffee at Starbucks. You say, well, I don't want to do You don't do it every day, but even a couple times a week. Now go back to the 50s and try to explain to them the logistics of a four dollar cup of coffee adjusted for inflation. So let's say a two dollar cup of coffee, mm. yeah. a dollar fifty cup of coffee. Ever. Actually, I think it'd be a forty-one dollar cup of coffee. Yes, <laughs> yeah. ever, <laughs> yeah. ever. You just say, "Well, look, look. I don't want to live a life like I just, you know, every now and then I want to go to Starbucks." Oh, well, what's that Starbucks? You say it's where I go and I get some coffee. So what? You pay a little extra, like a nickel and a half. <laughs> it's four dollars. Wow, Whoa. you're retarded. You wonder where your money's gone. <laughs> they were a lot more honest back then, too. What do you do yeah. there? You know, it, I sit on a computer for eight hours and apply so I can get welfare. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I'm uh, sorry, what? Hey, give me a hand. Let me see your calluses. <laughs> Pussy. You're the right. first man who's ever admitted to being on welfare in front of another man. Oh, wow. Usually oh, we, right. you know, shame each other and beat them in an alleyway. Yes, I'm going to go home and hit my wife. Yeah. <laughs> 1950s. MAGA. Well, we just, we, just, <laughs> we just gave them something that would work. You move where the jobs are, right? So in some places, job markets are booming. In North Dakota, for a long Long time there the oil shale stuff with yeah fracking. that was they, hell they on earth get, <laughs> performed yeah. there no i'm just saying but they couldn't get enough people you could make no, a fortune doing true. that and they're like oh we can't leave the cities do you know what the irish did do you know what the italians did the chinese did uh, they left their country to come to america yeah, for when privilege. jobs were available yeah right privilege white privilege i know what the no. somalians did their brothers they left an entire way of life and millennials are telling me that they can't move out of new york city because they just love the environment so much they can't move to a place that has better jobs and lower cost of living they I'm can't the do it it's impossible dear board i don't want to say they i want to say we well, yeah because i am a part of this him. and i look around and i understand but it's I really like sad are, though i am though. i am a millennial yeah, no, I am too technically an elder millennial. What? I, I'm, I'm, right I'm right in the middle of it. I'm right in the middle of it. I'm an Xer. I'm a I'm exennial, right between the two. Really? Uh, lost generation. Yeah. Mm. Well, There's we like found three years of a generation that's better than both of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I just it's one. I, I and it really makes me sad that you have people out there who want to feel hopeless and who have an entire party who are designed to make you feel hopeless. Look, yeah. if you want to live the American dream that your parents lived, first off, you don't. You don't want to live that. But guess what? You can live an even better American dream. And what do I mean by that? I mean that when adjusted for inflation, you can make more money, you can work more efficiently, less hours, more flexibly, retire earlier if you do a handful of things. And live longer. That means don't get a useless degree. Yeah. Get married at the right age. Don't get divorced. Live within your means. That's it. You do that. The American dream that, by the way, your boomer parents... And the greatest generation before them could only dream. In other words, they lived what you refer to as the American dream. You live right now in a moment that to them would be the stuff of dreams. And you don't appreciate it. Look, take advantage of it. There was an old quote where people used to talk about, uh, I don't remember where I had heard this, probably some fighter, it could have been some old documentary. They were talking to someone who was a reigning champion. And they said, are you worried about this uh, other guy coming up? They said, you know, he's hungry. I mean, he's hungry. He's he's a he's a young he's a young cub. He's coming up and he's hungry. And you've been on top for a while. You you don't really have that same hunger. And he said, you know what? Yeah, but when you're on the top and you want to eat, the food is there. So you got to take advantage of it. Right now, you are on top and the food is there. And instead, you're leaving it. Right now, you have more opportunities. You have more job openings. Period. Than ever. More job openings than ever. The ability to generate more streams of income than ever. The flexibility to move to more places than ever. And instead, you make choices. 
to get useless degrees. You make choices to go into debt. You make choices to convince yourself that you're going to be single until your window with your eggs closes and then you're really miserable and you become a sh professional shrew for the rest of your life to justify your poor decisions. You choose not to take advantage of what would be to generations one, two prior would merely be the stuff of dreams. Okay, we're gonna go do some life advice. I think you have to get going here, Dave, because you have to get going on your way to Houston, and uh, Gerald and I are gonna do life advice tomorrow. Yeah. YouTube, Cultural Appropriation Month. Big day. Yeah. Right now, I know we're on Rumble, so but still. we'll still go with the spirit of yeah. if we were on YouTube, piss off. <laughs>